Ah, good morning. So I'm here with an unboxing review of a new chronograph I got from AliExpress, and it's a, not of a copy or it's a, a unbranded version of the Air Force One barrel mount one. It's UNF thread, half inch UNF uh, standard one goes onto the end of the barrel. So it comes in a nice little case like this. It's really well packaged as well. It's all wrapped in bubble wrap inside, which I've obviously got rid of. So opening the actual case and zip that. It comes with a USB A to USB C charging lead. It's quite short, but it does the job. Okay, and then the actual chronograph itself. So it's quite a nice little unit. It's about 85 millimeters long, uh, 35 millimeters in diameter. The internal bore is, well, I'm actually at 9.7, they say 10 mil on, the, on their website. It's only got uh, two operating buttons, by the way. So it's got a nice little screen here. Uh, so that's the USB C charging point there. Uh, charging up, you can see one of the sensors in there in the inside there. Uh, there's no external light, so when you plug it in, you'll see that glow red, and when it's fully charged, that'll go out, so it's fully charged up. Okay. You've also got a threaded adapter here. Now I'm not sure if I can unscrew it. That's it. So that is like a threaded adapter. I'm not sure what that's for. It could be for fitting internally onto a shroud, probably. So that's like, a, like a blanking cover, which you probably won't need. Okay. That's your in, internal thread. It's not particularly deep, and this is where the only problem I've had with this. Okay, and I'll explain that in a minute. So to power on, you've got basically two buttons. You've got a square and a triangle there, up arrow and down arrow, okay, and a square. So you hold that in, and you'll see it pa power up. Okay, so that's the reading you've got there. So at the top, you've got um, you've got a choice of a foot pounds energy in joules, and also you can probably see the weight in there. So if you hold that in, okay, like so, you turn it off, turn it back on again, it comes really quite responsive. The top button, hold that in, and you can see the actual settings there. That allows you to flick through, up through the actual, adjust the weight of the pellet. It's in grams, by the way, not grains. So you, you need to know the actual weight of the actual pellet in grams. There is no grain option. And once you've set that, you can actually cycle through it like that. Okay, and change them, and then when you're happy, just hold it in, and that stores it. Okay, so yeah, so that that allows you that. The lower button, press that. That flips between meters per second and feet per second. Okay, so that works really well. Now there's lots of other buttons as well. You can hold them both in, and that allows you to go into the actual uh, menu. As you take the shot, it'll store the shots. It doesn't actually say how many shots it stores, but I've short stored up no, ten, no problem. Uh, so I've got a bit of a chill actually. My nose is a bit runny. Bit blocked up. You see the battery indicator there. Yeah, that's uh, right on the uh, far right. Um, so yeah, seems really well made. Um, did try and fit it to my pistol. I did test it with my crossman, and this is where I found the problem. But if I take the adapter off to fit a way I fit a moderator on or a silencer, depending on what you want to call it, you'll see it's quite a long thread, about eight mil long. And when you fit this directly onto that, like. So you've got a massive gap there, and of course it's not very stable, it's also not very square. So you really want that to sit flush against there. So instead of adapting your actual moderator, what I did, I went up to best fittings. You see this, this here, I'll just hold that there so you can read it. And they do two, they do two sides, they do a, a 50 mil and a 38 mil length. This, this is a 50, they didn't have any 38, but if you can get a shorter one, it might be better. And what I did, instead of obviously altering your, all your, um, your mountings to fit, I took this best fittings one, which I also had an 8mm filled it, and I chopped it down. Yeah, so now, fitting that in there like that, it fits perfectly, it's flush, it's tight, and it's square. So that can go, basically, the deep thread there, no problem, so that'll go all the way on to your whatever rifle or pistol you have. And it's a perfect fit. Okay, that, that's that's two inches. That's fifty mil. You can get thirty-eight mil, but they never in stock. Okay, so that's how that fits. So that was the only issue I had with this this uh, chronograph was fitting it squarely, because obviously you, it needs to be square. Because when you fire a pellet through, if it's not square, you're going to clip the inside. You're going to damage the inside of the actual sensors and all sorts. Okay, so that's really really good. So that's the adapter I use now, which keeps in that case to go with the the chronograph. Yeah. Um, so what I did, I went through all the actual controls and I've got a 
big sheet here of all the buttons to press if I just scroll up and if you ever if you have one of these chronographs and you're not sure how to use it uh, you'll be able to pause this yeah go through it like that that's the that's final one and that'll give you the information also the, there is information written there on the diameters weights of the actual chronograph internal bores yeah it weighs 106 grams <coughs> excuse me now battery life I did have it connected to uh, my iPhone, Bluetooth it, because Bluetooth across, using the, the app, which is the Ocker Air app, yeah, it tells you, shows you a little, um, what they call QR codes, yeah, to find it, and it works very well. Little glitches, like when you put the weight into this, and you put the weight into the app, um, <laughs> Bluetooth, um, so if you put like 0.77 grams into the, into the chronograph, you connect the app, the app says 70 grams, uh, 0.7 grams, sorry to say, 0.70 grams. And uh, then you change that to 70, 0.77 and it changes it to 70. So it does that and then if you change the chronograph back to what it should be, the actual weight of the pellet, they finally sync up at 0.77 grams. This is 11.9 um, grain uh, tutu pellet, yeah, our Arduous Hobbies that I was using this, this particular tutu. So that was a, a little glitch, but once you actually get it to pair properly, they, they pair fine, they're just, it's the data. They, if you leave it at 0.7 grams in the actual app and, and you set this up correctly at 0.77 grams, this will read sort of like 5.3, show 5.3 foot pounds energy, but the app will say, app will say it's 4.6 foot pounds energy. So you get a, a, a difference in readings. But if you, if you sync them first, yeah, set the, the app up with the right weight and then set the chronograph up with the right, right weight and then they, they're both reading the same weight, 0.77 uh, grams, yeah, which is 11.9 grain. <coughs> if, that, if that is clear to you. So yeah, um, internally, yeah, nicely fitted. I don't know, just show the inside of the bore. So you've got your two sensors either end, yeah, so you've got a, a sensor there and, and obviously corresponding sensors, LEDs, same at the other end as well, yeah. So there's plenty of space in there. I think you'll certainly do a 0.25. I could try that because I do have a 0.25 Ultra. So I could test it with that. But I use the 2.2. I use that the extension, obviously. Uh, this is a reasonable amount of grunt. It's got about 5.3 foot-pounds energy. So I thought, well, CO2 can give false readings if you fire CO2 through sensors sometimes. So that extension did help. It did actually give me much more um, consistent readings. So going back to the readings, um, uh, what I did here, um, I did some chronograph results. I used my FX radar, my LMBR, and of course this one, and I wanted to compare them all. So the FX radar, yeah, gave me 5.53 foot-pounds energy. The LMBR gave me 5.55 foot-pounds energy. These are over five shots average. Shooting the, the barrel mount one uh, rapidly, um, he gave me 14, 14 um, FPS spread over five shots, which was 5.05. But because CO2 tends to cool rapidly, obviously when you shoot it quickly, I'd actually reduced it, made a bigger gap. I think I gave it a 45 second gap in between each shot, and it was much more consistent. It gave me 5.3 foot-pounds of energy. So it was written just slightly under, I mean the average FP, uh, FPS was uh, 458, 459, and 448. So it's not too far out to be fair. And you can go into a menu, <coughs> excuse me, when you've got it turned off, if you hold in two, press the, both buttons together, it will go into calibration uh, menu where you can actually adjust the calibration from 90% to 110%. So you can actually adjust the actual uh, reading on the actual chronograph, which you can with a lot of chronographs anyhow. Okay, so <clears throat> the actual best fittings stuff is in the bottom there. It tells you what the model is, um, the size, how much I've paid, and also this is the actual, what I did to the actual threads. So the thread was uh, eight mil long. I cut it down to two point seven mil, which is about three threads. I think it's about three threads on that. If you look at it close up, so yeah, and that means that when it, when you screw that into the chronograph, the chronograph sits square with the actual end of the actual extender. So that that way you know that it's going to be perfectly square, which means the the pellet will go through perfectly square to the actual sensors. So you won't have any chance of actually you know, of it dropping and clipping. So yeah, I think that's that, that is a solution. There are other um, half-inch UNFs to half-inch UNF adapters you can get. I think uh, 
or eagle something can do, do one as well but it's quite a wide thing this is quite thin which is quite nice so basically with that fitting like that I can just fit it onto any any rifle uh, any pistol that's got a UNF thing without uh, having the damage to that thread inside by screwing it in too far. If you do try to fit it in too far, you try to, you're going to damage the, the internal sensor. You can see, you can actually see the actual sensor where the sensors start. There's an internal uh, tube there in there where the sensors are. You don't really want to damage that. So yeah, I've done some testing with it. Uh, there's no 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 clipping whatsoever. Um, the, the way I actually found that there's no clipping, apart from the chronograph shows it's very consistent which proves there's no clipping. Also I did a bit of like freestanding, well it's more like semi-rested. That was with the, just the silencer fitted with the pistol shooting there and this was with the chronograph fitted yeah, down there. So yeah, that's at uh, 10 yards sort of like semi-rested. So I was moving around a little bit but that's pretty good. That's with the, the RWS um, hobbies yeah, which worked very well. So yeah, what do I think of it? Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, very good for the money, really. Um, as I said, battery life seems to be about 12 hours or 10, 10 plus hours easily. Yeah, that's with it Bluetooth across as well. So it didn't do any major dip in performance. Um, weight, the only downside is you've got to put gram, grams in, not grains in. Yeah, uh, but you could, it is very, very... And actually, like, so if you get to the readings, you press both buttons and you can cycle through them. If you, you, the instructions show that, I showed you. You can cycle through them. Uh, then you press those two together, it cycles into the number of shots, so you can flick through them. And also, if you double press it again, you can actually invert the display. So, where's it like that? Yeah, you can actually flip it over like that. Okay, so you can end up with, um, you can, it depends on which, which side you want to read it from. Because when you obviously screw it on, the display might be this side, it might be the other side, you might want to flip the display. So, it's reading like that, but on the other side. Okay, so I hope you like that little uh, review. I shall do some more testing with this. I shall probably almost certainly fit it to some of my rifles, like my Ultra, which is 2.5 cal. Do some shooting through that, see how it reads. And then um, probably do another little, little review later on after I've done some long-term testing. But judging by the, the results there, yeah, don't forget CO2 can be a bit fussy, firing through sensors. I know that from my own experience when I do chronographs with my, pist my CO2 pistols. If you're a little bit too close to the sensors, the CO2 will give a false reading, yeah. So I tend to shoot the pistols further further back from the actual sensors. So that, that extender, that two inch extender, actually does probably does it a favor by doing that, yeah. Okay, so I hope you like that little video. Uh, have a great weekend, take care, and thanks for watching.